pre-Ramadan lecture series to remind everyone the first lecture was on are you ready for Ramadan the second one which was last week Saturday the fiqh of fasting and tonight's topic would be the spiritual aspect of fasting for tonight's lecture we have with us Sheikh Munaf who is also the Imam as you all know of the Karani Jama and the other Shuyuk apologize Sheikh Fadil may be joining us he is running a little bit late but I'm quite confident that Sheikh Munaf would be able to do justice to the topic tonight shortly I'd hand over to him Thereafter, we would have, he would speak for about 20, 25 minutes. Then we'd have a question and answer session. Tonight, we are trying to finish a bit earlier. As you all know, um, we have dinner for after Isha, inshallah. So without further ado, I invite Sheikh Munaf to begin his discourse. <clears throat> Bismillah rahman rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. وهو المستحق أن يحمد ويشكر ويذكر وأصلي وأسلم على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you Once again I'm very privileged to be in this gathering to be sharing some reflections on Suyam fasting and the month of Ramadan which is very close in a few days inshallah ta'ala and at this point in time I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying Allahumma barik lana fi ma baqiya min sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan Oh Allah bless us with whatever has remained out of the month of sha'ban and let us reach the month of Ramadan. Ameen. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, <clears throat> the sessions we have had so far about fasting, they were all important. Looking at the preparation for the month of Ramadan and also the laws concerning the month of Ramadan, but perhaps the most important aspect of a siyam of fasting is the spiritual aspect and today inshallah we would like to reflect together of some aspects of the spirituality of the fasting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made obligatory on a special chosen set of people called al-mu'minun ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. So in this ayah, as we are all aware of, and we have been hearing it from time and time over and over, we are being reminded tonight again of the purpose of the fasting. Allah tells us the purpose of the fasting. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Now we already know there isn't any Muslim who is unaware of the fact that fasting is not compulsory. I think everybody knows that fasting is a pillar of Islam and it is compulsory as long as you are not sick or on a journey or you do not find the difficulty and come on the category of the people who cannot fast because of old age or some other thing which gives you the the permission of not fasting so everyone knows it is compulsory and we also are aware of the reason why we are observing the fast and this of course helps us to carry out the, that command because if you were given a command to do something Think about it. If you were commanded to do something, but you were not told the reason why you have to do it, you would not be motivated to engage in that activity 
but maybe because you're working for someone, then you will have to go ahead and do it, but you would not be motivated enough. And you don't know why you're doing it. But we, we know what we want. We want to achieve something that is called taqwa. And this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it obligatory. He said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Now we want to go a little bit deeper. We want to dig a little bit deeper. Knowing your objective and knowing your goal does not necessarily mean that you would achieve it. Take for example, if you're playing a football match, you know you have to score at that ball in that goal. You know that. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you will score a goal. So knowing that we have to achieve taqwa does not necessarily mean that we would achieve it. Hence the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows that many people would not achieve it. He says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ means perhaps, maybe, you would achieve taqwa. So it does not necessarily mean that you would, for sure, by abstaining from food, and drinks an intimate relationship that you would have achieved that goal. It's like going to university. We all have an equal chance in the university. We are attending the lectures and we are listening and so on, but the examin uh, examination comes and many people, they fail the examination. So Ramadan is like, it's like a souk, it's like a market. Whosoever makes the profit, they make the profit. And whosoever loses, they lose. Just like when you do a business. So now, let us examine again. So we understand our goal. We are striving to achieve it, but not necessarily achieving it. So then, why should we strive to achieve that taqwa? Because with taqwa, with taqwa, our lives will be straightened. It will be upright. We will be on the right track. So when we're asking Allah every single day, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim, Guide us on this straight path. The taqwa, that consciousness, that awareness that we are striving to achieve, right? It is going to, to straighten up my life. That self-control, because the word taqwa, as translators, you know, they're digging for words, but there isn't any single English word that could fit suitably to give a proper translation of the word taqwa. So taqwa entails a lot of things. It is a consciousness and a feeling that the person gets after deep contemplation of the existence of a creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. And having recognized this, he tries to fill his life with obedience. Obedience to his creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also trying to follow the teachings of his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, avoiding the prohibitions and all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rasul sallallahu wa sallam has commanded us to stay away from. So taqwa, my beloved brothers and sisters, is important because with taqwa, if our lives are straightened in this world, then when we leave this world and we go to the grave, because of that taqwa that we had, that taqwa would help us in our graves. Because our Prophet ﷺ told us that al-qabru awwalu manazil al-akhirah The grave is the first station to the hereafter. It is either a garden from the gardens of paradise or a ditch from the fire of hell. But because the person had taqwa, which would have directed his life, then his time in that grave would be na'im, everlasting bliss. So now, 
trying to achieve taqwa, where, how do we achieve it? It's not something that is physical, like I could see it. It's something like I could feel. And it's within. It comes from within ourselves. Hence we find our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Ala inna fil jasadi mudgha Ida saluhat salahal jasadu kullu Wa ida fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu Ala wahi al qalb Within each and every one of us there is a mercil of flesh if it is taken care of then the whole body will be taken care of but if it is disease, then the whole body is disease. Allah wahi al qalb. It is nothing less but the heart of the individual. So the heart of the individual is what is the driving force within each and every individual. And that is where the taqwa comes from. And it comes with a lot of contemplation and thinking you're thinking about your the reason of your existence why you are here in this world why were you created and what is your mission what is why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and why it is and how am I living my life so it's a lot of thinking am I living my life in obedience am I living my life with that consciousness am I also empathizing a situation of people who are in poverty all of these things my beloved brothers and sisters these feelings will come if we have the taqwa taqwa is so important that this word has been mentioned many times in the quran many times taqwa and the various derivatives have been mentioned many times the word at itself taqwa Anybody knows how many times it is mentioned in the Quran? A oh, hundred dollars, of course. <laughs> Just like that, taqwa is mentioned nine times. But it taqu, it taqu, in the command, it is mentioned 84 times. And muttaqoon and muttaqeen together is mentioned 31 times. But the other derivatives, when you add all of them together, maybe you did a check on that one. So $200 now, the price going up. How many times the word taqwa and the various derivatives has been mentioned in the Quran? You know I was going to talk about taqwa tonight. You must have done some homework before you came to class today. <laughs> All right? Should I raise it to 300 or 500? 500. Somebody said 500. Okay. $500. How many times taqwa with the various derivatives have been mentioned in the Quran? Tick tock, tick tock. Time up. All right, 182 times, 182 times. Now, why it is I'm saying this, why I'm asking these questions, I want to make a point. The Quran has how many pages? The Medina script. MashaAllah, Ahlul Quran, the people who read the Quran a lot. 600, exactly how many? Huh? 602? Very close, but still, a miss is as good as a mile. <laughs> 604 pages. So, if you divide 604 by 182, it gives you 3.31. So that means to say, taqwa, God consciousness, all right, that feeling must constantly be with us. All right, this is the point I wanted to make. Like for every three, three and a quarter, three and a third page of the Quran, some taqwa, taqwa, remind, be reminded of taqwa. Okay, and it is very important. Fasting, 
is just one of the means or the ways of achieving the taqwa. Okay? But there are other ways of achieving taqwa. And if we check the Quran, we will find so many different ways. But we are talking about fasting. Now, I want now for us to pay a little bit more attention to what our Prophet Wasallam tells us about bringing this point closer to us and understanding the importance of taqwa. He said, Many are the fasting people, many are those who will fast, but he or she would not achieve anything from their fasting except becoming hungry and thirsty. So you will get some benefit by depriving your body, your physical body, from foods and drinks. You could get benefits because of our Prophet ﷺ, he said, Sumu tasihu, observe the fasting, <coughs> and you will become healthy. Observe the fasting to become healthier. So yes, you will become, you will get some blessings by depriving your physical body of food and drinks and intimate relationship throughout the day. But there is a lot more to get from fasting. And that is what we want. We want more. We want the blessings. We want the doors of Jannah to open for us and the doors of Jahannam to be closed for us. And we want the shayateen to be chained from us. So this is one hadith that we are all being reminded about. Let us not be from those who will be observing fasting but gaining nothing else but hunger and thirst. Then there is another hadith in which our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us Man lam yada' qawl al-zoor wal amala bih falaysa lillahi haja fi an yada' ta'amahu wa sharaba Whosoever cannot give up lies, falsehood bearing false testimony right? If you can't give up those things, Allah is not in need for you to give up your food and your drinks. Lying, backbiting, slandering. They are a hadith, many a hadith that tells us or tell us of if a person engage in these activities, like once there was a woman who was fasting, but she was backbiting someone. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he knew she was fasting. He called for some food and he gave her to eat. She said, no, I'm fasting. She said, no, you can't be fasting and engaging in these activities, backbiting and slandering and falsehood and all of these things. So we have to understand that when we are observing the fasting, that we must abstain from all of these ill qualities. And then we are also reminded as we are examining some aspects of the spiritual aspect of fasting. Our Prophet ﷺ also tells us, he said, Kullu amal ibn Adam, all of the deeds of the son of Adam, that is me and you, all of us. Lahu, for him, whatever we do is for him, for us, for our own selves. يضاعف العشر الحسنة بعشر أمثالها. Allah multiplies every good deed we do ten times, up to seven hundred times. And these are all mentioned in the Quran. For example, in Surah Al-An'am, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "من جاء بالحسنة فله عشر أمثالها." Whoever comes with a good, Allah gives him. Ten times more, and then we see in this in Surah Al-Baqarah, he tells us about a person who spends in the cause of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah, it is the similitude of such a person is like a person who plants a grain, one grain, and from that one grain, Allah gives him a plant 
that produces seven air, and each air producing 100 grains, like a corn, corn tree, all right? So with one grain, you get 700. So coming back to the hadith and trying to understand the hadith, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that all the good things, depending on the, on the nature of that good thing that we do, Allah multiplies it, the least is 10 times, and up to 700 times. And then he said, Illa sawm, except fasting. Fa inna hu li wa ana ajzibi. But fasting is for me, and I will give the reward of it. Now let us examine this part of the hadith. Fasting is for me does not mean that Allah is in need of anything. It is mentioned in Hadith Qudsi that the meaning of the Hadith, our Prophet وسلم, says that Allah says, if all of mankind and all of the jinns were to come together to offer any benefit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not be able to do so. What can we give Allah? Where are we going to get something to give him when he has created everything? We are not created. We can't give. We can't benefit Allah. Likewise, if we were to come together to, to harm Allah, all of the jinns and all of mankind, we will not be able to harm him. So then what does the hadith mean when he says, fasting is for me? What does that mean? It means when you examine and compare fasting with the other acts of ibadat, all other acts of ibadat, or most of them, if not all of them, they are subject to questioning. Is your, is your intention sincere? Did you come to the masjid, for example, to perform salah sincerely for the pleasure of seeking the pleasure of Allah? Or were you there to be seen by others? Are you giving your charity so that people could talk how charitable you are? Are you going for Hajj so you get the title Al-Hajj or Haji? So all of these acts of ibadat, you cannot hide doing them. You go to the masjid, people see you. No matter how much you try to hide your sadaqah, the good that you give, your charity, at least the person in the receiving end, he knows that it is charity that he is getting. But compare those acts of ibadat with fasting. You can't look at a person and determine if a person is fasting or not. Because it's, it's not about doing something, it's about abstinence. Abstaining from food, and so you can't look. Hence the reason fasting is different. And because it is different, the reward goes beyond 700. It goes beyond that. Fasting, my beloved brothers and sisters, when you examine the spiritual aspect of it, it shapes our behavior and our character. And it reminds us of our duties and our responsibilities. If we are well-to-do and we could afford three meals, and now we have to undergo the same hardship that the poor person who cannot afford three meals a day we have to feel that hunger and feel it and experience it to know what it is like for the person whose entire life, his whole year is like this. He can't eat three meals a day. So when we get that feeling, no matter how rich we are, we, we are fasting, then we are being reminded of our duties towards those people. Wafi amwalihim haqqun in their wealth there is a portion that is due to those who have been deprived that is the, the zakat Allah has given us it we have to give it back All right. so fasting my beloved brothers and sisters it is like reorganizing our everyday life in every aspect in our prayer how much more should we add in our recitation of the Quran, our contemplation, and the things that we do, and so many things, the fasting is doing for us. But I see my friend Sheikh Fadil has come, so you know I will give him a chance to say a few words. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان اليوم الدين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I was just making sure with him that he didn't speak about a particular hadith. Yeah, I missed the beginning. So how are you all? All the song in hungry. Uh, what are you hungry for? What are you hungry for? I was hoping somebody would say to fast. Subhanallah. You all not hungry to fast yet? Lo subhanallah, look at that low ebb. No, no excitement about Ramadan coming? Are you not excited about Ramadan? Yeah, so are you not hungry to fast? You don't have that hunger, you waiting for Ramadan so much, I think, all the posting, posting up, and all the posts about, and status about three days for Ramadan, ten days for Ramadan, the countdown, and all you not excited about Ramadan? And you're not hungry to fast? Oh, subhanallah, look at the excitement. <laughs> I know all the feelings on the hearts. You probably get a little confused when I say being hungry to fast. But we should have a hunger to fast, isn't it? So, one of the things that we as Muslims, we must believe in, and it's there in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, Alif la meem, thalika al-kitabu la rayba fihi hudal al-muttaqeen. That is a book. There is no doubt in it. A guide for the muttaqun, and we, Sheikh Munaf was speaking about taqwa not too long ago, as a guide for the muttaqun. And then he describes some traits of the muttaqun, alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib. Those people who believe in the unseen. Do you believe in the unseen? Do you believe in the unseen? Yes. Are you all asleep? Wake up. Yeah, we believe in the unseen. If we do not believe in the unseen, we, in the unseen, we are not Muslims. Yeah? If we do not believe in the unseen, we are not Muslims. It's very straightforward like that. Because we have to believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and can you see Him? No. But we believe in Him. Yeah. yu'minuna bil ghaib. So, part of the characteristics of the muttaqun the people who have that fear, that taqwa, that piety, is that they believe in the unseen. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِكُونَ And those people who believe in the unseen and they establish their salah and from what we give them, they spend among for themselves, they spend for themselves and they spend in charity. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِكُونَ what I want to talk about, what I want to remind you about is that concept of believing in the unseen. Because it is such a critical part of our being as Muslims and it should be in us that we understand this unseen. Because everything that Sheikh Munaf spoke about by way of reward and all that is unseen. Have you ever seen anybody getting rewarded in Jannahs yet? No. You ever see anybody, have you ever seen anybody getting punished in the fire of hell? Have you? No. But do you believe that Jannah and Nar, the, the gardens of heavens and the fire of hell, that they are real? Do you believe that? Yes. We believe it. And this is the essence of it. We believe in it. So all the rewards that Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us about is something that we have to believe in. Yeah, while we have gotten from his mercy, from his ni'mah, and we have gotten, some of us, if not all of us, some aspects of our taqwa, yeah, and we mentioned this last week, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلَهُ مَقْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حِيثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Whosoever has, ex exercises taqwa, whosoever has taqwa, Allah will make a way for them, and he will give them sustenance from areas they never even ex uh, imagined. And I'm sure every single one of us got something we never thought we was going to get. Whether it's some extra money, whether it might be something more material like a car, maybe a house, maybe, you know, maybe the person, somebody to get married to, you never thought about it. Yeah? A, a, a boy, a girl, whatever it is, you never thought you were to get married to this person. And there you are. So, 
we have to believe in the unseen and we have to have that in our heart because every single thing we're working for is for the unseen wabtaghi fi ma ataka allah dar al akhira wa la tansa nasibaka min al dunya seek with what allah has given you the hereafter we haven't seen the hereafter but allah azza wa jalla tells us in the quran that what we have take it and use it for the hereafter and we haven't seen it wabtaghi fi ma ataka allah dar al akhira wa la tansa nasibaka min al dunya and don't forget your share of this world because whatever allah azza wa jalla has given you you have to take it and use it for the hereafter huwa alladhi ja'alakum khala'if al ard he is the one who has made you leaders upon leaders on the earth huwa alladhi ja'alakum khala'if al ard and then he tells us wa rafa'a ba'dakum fawqa ba'dhin darajat and he has raised some of you above others in levels in stages liyabluwakum fi ma atakum so that he will test you in what he has given you If Allah Azza wa Jalla gives you ten thousand dollars, He's not going to test you for a hundred thousand dollars. And if He made you a millionaire, He's going to test you for that. And then some of us, as we say, you know, in class, this well, normally it's a girl, eh? This girl, she's the brain in the class. She real brains. She have brains, yeah. Allah is going to test you for that. If you have good strength, He's going to test you for that. If you have skill, He's going to test you for that. Whatever it is you have, Allah Azza wa Jalla is going to test you for that. He's not going to test you with more. Than, than what he has given you exactly what he has given you he's going to test you with it so here we are at the doorstep of ramadan and remember do not take your ramadan for granted i just want to remind you that we cannot say we are in ramadan yet we haven't reached yeah and the concept could be that this year might not be our last our last last ramadan could have been last year We don't want that. We don't wish for it. We wish to be in this Ramadan and plenty other Ramadans as well as as long as Allah Azza wa Jal wills. But that idea must be in ourselves. There's a little line of poetry in that book, Qatrun Nada. You remember that book? Qatrun Nada is a is a book on grammar. It goes like this: Ya Sahi, Shamir, Wala Tazal, Zakir al Maut, Fanisyanuhu Dalalum Mubin. Oh my friend, ya sahi, shamir. Shamir really means to pull your socks up, pull up your, roll up your sleeves. And we say the same thing in English. You, you need to pull up your socks, man. I mean, take take sock off yourself. Check yourself. Shamir. Yeah, check yourself. Walata zal zakir al maut, and never stop remembering death. Fanisyanuhu, because to forget death, bala lom mubin is a clear error, because. If we do not remember that we are going to die, we won't remember that we are responsible for our actions. And if we do not do that, we will not think about being accountable for what we do. And then we could be at a loss for that because we need to remember that everything we do, we are accountable for it. So our fasting, insha Allah, may Allah Azza wa Jalla deliver us to Ramadan and accept from us. It is ruhani as well. It is physical. Definitely, it is physical. It is very, very physical. But we cannot. Deny the spiritual aspect of it, that the strength we get from it, and we need to use that strength for after Ramadan, and build on it and continue with it. And if it is we fast three days in every month, outside of the month of Ramadan, it will be as though we fast forever, because one good deed is multiplied by ten times. So if you fast three days outside the month of Ramadan, it's like fasting for thirty days in blessings, at least. Thus. The messages of Ramadan will remain with us, and we can have a, a very profound, beautiful, you know, our iman soaring right through the air. And Allah Azza wa Jalla, we hope that He be pleased with us. So may Allah bless us all. Uh, you know, and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time again. Um, I know you all would have some questions. So barakallahu fikum. Amin. Akulu kawli hada wa astaghfirullahi wa lakum. ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم